Thank you, Senator Manchin. Senator Ayotte. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to share in uh, what all of my colleagues have said about your distinguished service, Secretary Panetta, and how grateful we are for everything that you've done for our country. Deeply appreciated it. Um, and I thank you both for being here. I wanted to follow up, uh, General Dempsey, on, as I understand it, you received briefings uh, from General Ham that would include uh, intelligence reporting as well as the reports from the State Department. And you received those uh, regarding the situation in Libya, um, including the information about the uh, prior attacks within Benghazi, including those on our consulate. Is that right? Yes, Senator. We get reports weekly from each combatant commander. And so as the ARB found, as well as the, um, the HISCAC did a report on this as well, and, but the ARB had said that there was a clear and vivid picture of a, rapid, a rapidly deteriorating threat environment in East, eastern Libya. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, one of the things you had said is that, uh, Secretary, that you were aware that Ambassador Stevens of his cable that said that the consulate could not withstand a coordinated attack. Is that right? Correct. Um, in general, you had said that you previously you were aware of that. Yeah, I was aware well. of the communication back to the State Department. And you said that the State Department didn't request assistance. Is that right? Is that general? I believe you said that. Yes. yes. No, that's correct. Did you ever bring that to the attention of Secretary Clinton? I mean, this is a pretty... Uh, a pretty surprising and shocking, uh, important cable to receive from an ambassador that that where our people are housed could not withstand a coordinated attack. Did you ever speak with Secretary Clinton about that? <laughs> Senator, uh, you know, as I as I mentioned in my testimony, uh, NCTC had identified almost 281 facilities that were under uh, a threat of one kind or another, and uh, to deal with that. I mean, that's not our responsibility. Well, well that's I just want to, and I just would add my straightforward question, I think, and particular to both of you, is particularly to General Dempsey. You said you were aware of the cable. Did you ever bring it to Secretary Clinton's attention, given that it said from her ambassador that uh, the consulate could not withstand a coordinated attack? Yes the, or no? But I the, did not. The cable was actually to the State Department, not yeah. to me. No, I understand, but you were aware of it. It's a pretty important cable, and you said you were also aware of the deteriorating security situation. As a result of our meetings on the counterterrorism. Okay, but you did not bring globally. it to Secretary Clinton. I did not. Did you ever bring it to the President's attention, either of you? No. No. Okay. Um, let me, based on the deteriorating security situation, uh, we have this map that has the potential uh, military bases in the area. As I understand it, uh, we have F-16s at Aviano. Is that true? That's correct. Uh, were they deployed that night? They were not. Why not? Uh, the, for a couple of reasons. One is that the, uh, in order to deploy them, it requires the, this is the middle of the night now. These are not aircraft on strip alert. Mm -hmm. They're there as part of our commitment to NATO and Europe. And so as we looked at the timeline, uh, it was pretty clear that it would take 20, up to 20 hours or so to get them there. Se secondly, Senator, importantly, it was the wrong tool for the job. I guess it's not clear to me why it would, on you said in your testimony that we are on heightened alert on September 11th, why it would take over 20 hours. Uh, we know that flight time for an F-16 is not, certainly not 20 hours, even if we were to refuel uh, from Aviano. And given the deteriorating security situation in the situa it, that you've described, it really is, I don't understand why we didn't have uh, armed assets somewhere in the area that could have responded in, in time, at least for the second uh, attack on the annex. Um, that's not clear to me, and I think that is insufficient as we look at what happened here. But I do have a follow-up question. Uh, Secretary Panetta, you said that you um, were in a briefing with the President of the United States. Uh, I believe it was about 5 o'clock our time, and you had just learned about the incident on the consulate. Uh, what conversation did you have with the President? What did he ask you uh, to do as a result of this attack? And throughout the night, what communications were you having with him? Yeah. Uh, and, and can you tell us on a, on a timeline as to who was calling the shots there, if it wasn't him, another member of the White House? No, no, no. Uh, at, at the time, we had... Uh, 
we were concerned about Cairo and demonstrations in Cairo, and then we had just picked up the information that uh, that something was happening, that uh, there was an apparent attack going on in Benghazi, and I informed uh, the president of uh, of that fact, and uh, he at that point uh, directed both myself and General Dempsey to do everything we needed to do to try to protect lives there. Did he ask you how long it would take to deploy assets, including armed no, he uh, just, aviation to the area? He, he basically said, do whatever, would do whatever you need to do to be able to protect uh, our people there. Did you have any, uh, so he didn't ask you what ability we had in the area and what we could do? No, I think, I mean, he, he relied on, uh, on both uh, myself as secretary and on General Dempsey's uh, capabilities. He knows generally uh, what we've deployed into the region, uh, we've presented that to him in other briefings. So he knew generally what was deployed out there, but uh, as to specifics about time, et cetera, et cetera, no, he just left that up to us. Did you have any f further communications with him that night? No. Did you have any other further communications? Did he ever call you that night to say, how are things going? Uh, what's going on? Where's the consulate? No, um, but uh, we, were, we were aware that as we were getting information on what was taking place there, uh, particularly when uh, we got information that uh, the ambassador, uh, his, his life had been lost, uh, we, we, we were aware that that information went to the White House. Did you communicate with anyone else at the White House that night? No. No one else called you to say, what, what, how are things going? No. Okay. And um, since then, has the president asked you why weren't we able to get, uh, in light of the second attack that occurred seven hours later, uh, armed assets there in order to help those who were left and attacked in the annex? The, the, pre the president has made uh, very clear to both myself and General Dempsey that uh, with regards to uh, future threats, we, we have got to be able to uh, deploy forces in a position where we can more rapidly respond. But just to be clear, that night he didn't ask you uh, what assets we had available and how quickly they could respond and what we could no. do to help those individuals there. I think uh, the biggest problem that night, Senator, was that nobody knew really what was going on there. And there was no follow-up during the night, at least from the White House directly? Uh, no, no, there wasn't. I, I would, Thank you. If I could just to make, correct one thing, I, I wouldn't say there was no follow-up from the White House. There was no follow-up, to my knowledge, with the President. But his staff was engaged with the National Military Command Center uh, and... Uh, pretty constantly through the period, which is, which is the way it would normally work. But no direct communication from him? Not, from, not on my part, no. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ayotte. Senator Gillibrand. 